Kukweza kukweza mioyo ya wanchu Kikupeza mankwa la goma sonjila za topano Zoti tete zera Tonjo tie ni tie mbepo so kambirana Hello once again. Today we continue our exploration of MLW. Earlier on today, I had the privilege of speaking with our interim director, Professor Henry Mwandumba, regarding the research at MLW and its impact. Here is what he had to say. Our portfolio has expanded and even during uh, the time that Professor Marco Molyneux was uh, director of this institution, uh, malaria was the main focus, but uh, other diseases like streptococcus pneumonia and other forms of pneumonia, uh, diarrhea disease due to rotavirus, uh, we also began to conduct research uh, in those areas. Um, and over the years when Professor uh, Rob Heidemann uh, became director, our portfolio expanded quite a great deal and now we do a lot of work uh, including typhoid, uh, TB, uh, HIV, uh, in addition to malaria. But the objective of all these uh, research projects is to address um, uh, issues of national importance uh, and our focus on biomedical research uh, is to find solutions to health problems. Um, so I'll give you an example of uh, vaccines for example. Uh, if you look at um, the rotavirus vaccine which is um, uh, on the national program for childhood immunization. Uh, we started doing work on that uh, in 1997 with uh, Professor, now Professor uh, Nigel Canliffe, uh, who started you know, looking at uh, the strains of rotavirus that we have. Uh, and that work obviously then led on to the development of the vaccine uh, and trying the vaccine uh, uh, here in Malawi and finding it to be effective. Uh, and the same was found in other countries and then it was incorporated into our national uh, uh, childhood vaccination program. And one of the more recent ones uh, that's going on is the typhoid vaccine, um, in which we've shown you know, high efficacy in children. Um, and we vaccinated 28,000 children uh, uh, in, in, uh, in six months, a study led by Professor Melita Gordon. Hi, come in as well. Thank you. Thank you. So, Professor Henry Mwandumba already mentioned that typhoid is a serious illness. You have demonstrated that the typhoid conjugate vaccine works. How effective is it and what difference does this make for Malawi and Africa as a whole? Thanks. Well, we vaccinated, as you heard, 28,000 children, followed them up for four years. So we're very confident that it's extremely safe and it's more than 80% effective, it means it's prevents 80% of potential cases. That's really important for Malawi. We have a burden of disease and I'm thrilled uh, to say that it's going to be rolled out nationally next year. Um, so that will be a, make a big difference, we hope. Showing that it works in a clinical trial isn't the same as real life, so we're also going to be doing some work to make sure that it really works in real life in Malawi. In terms of Africa, um, I, I think it's really great that Malawi is leading the way. Um, so what we expect is that following our introduction, our sister countries around us, so um, I think Kenya, Zambia, Uganda, Burkina Faso are going to be following based on the data that we have generated and will follow in Malawi's footsteps. So we're a leader in Africa and I think that's great. Wow, that's an amazing achievement. What next? Are there any new vaccines in the near future? Sure, well, part of our surveillance here means that we do pick up emergent new diseases. And while typhoid is a very ancient disease, um, there's a much more recently emerged non-typhoid salmonella, uh, which has a terrible case fatality. And we're in the process of trying to bring vaccines through for non-typhoid salmonella in the same way that we have for typhoid using our previous experience. And what makes all this possible? Ah, oh, great question. We have brilliant internal operational systems and they're essential. I think our long-term partnerships with the Blantyre District Health Office and more broadly with the Ministry of Health have been critical over at least two decades and they've helped Malawi to become an early uptake country. But most important of all, 
and most fundamental are the communities with whom we work and among whom we are privileged to work. What amazes me is that our work is not confined to the wards or the labs. A lot of what we do actually starts right from the community level and in partnership with several key partners. And so, what impact have these community engagement activities had on MLW's relationship with the community and ultimately on its research work? So, the most important thing is that at MLW, when we are designing community engagement activities, we make sure that it's two-way for mutual benefit. Uh, us as researchers, we see, you know, a positive outcome and the same thing with the communities. And that's what we've seen over the years. It has really been a good working relationship with the communities, the gatekeepers, and also other groups. Researchers are able you know, to walk around the catchment areas where research activities are done, and they're welcomed. And the same thing with the community members. They're able to respond positively. Participation has really been very good. The other projects that we've done you know, within a specific period of time, the sample sizes were really big, but we've been able, you know, to meet the targets just because of the positive response from, uh, from the community members. And that can really be attributed to the, uh, the, the impact of the community engagement initiatives that we've done over the years. Now, who is working behind scenes to make the research work at MLW possible? We speak with Aubrey Chalira, the Chief Operating Officer at MLW, to learn how the operating staff assist in enabling research work at MLW. I believe they are uh, what I call the four S's plus one S, like five S's which we work with from operations perspective in terms of supporting. So I'll start with the plus five A's, which is strategy. And in this case, in terms of strategy, it's important for operations to make sure that we have a clear operation strategy. And that OPS strategy is there really to support the research strategy. So for us, we have to understand the strategy and research is going to have also a clear strategy so that we are able to support them in that perspective. So that's the, that's the big A's uh, that I'll, I'll talk about. The next four S's is really staff in terms of our people, uh, staff in terms of things that we require to support them. Then we talk about spaces, and then we talk about systems. So in terms of uh, staff, in terms of the people within MLW or within the operations team, I think we ensure that we do have people who are rightly qualified uh, in the right places to ensure that the work that they do to support research they are able to do it diligently and to do it with excellence. And the next ace, which is staff, that's the things that we work with to support, provide support uh, to research. For example, we've got the different platforms in the lab. So as, as operations, we have to make sure that those staff, those items, those platforms, they work in such a way that uh, research is properly supported. So, the lab thing is just an example of the kind of stuff that we do have to support research. We are a responsive um, and responsible uh, organization. Uh, we work very closely with the government and other institutions. Um, and when COVID hit Malawi, uh, we found that to be um, you know, an area where we had to act responsibly and work with the government uh, to tackle that problem. Uh, so we've worked with the government and other uh, stakeholders to bring about the uh, oxygen plant um, at uh, Queen Elizabeth Central Hospital uh, and oxygen has been a vital uh, form of treatment for patients admitted with severe COVID but we've also worked with the government to provide uh, um, you know PPE to protect our healthcare workers uh, in hospitals um, and these are the frontline workers managing patients uh, with COVID and other, uh, and other infections. Queen Elizabeth and the Malawi uh, Liverpool Come Trust have worked together from the first day that uh, MLW came to, to Malawi. The contributions, uh, uh, I can summarize them uh, threefold. So uh, capacity building in terms of human resource, uh, young Malawian scientists uh, uh, 
uh, have gone through the MLW and I uh, have turned out to be world class uh, scientists. Then you have had uh, uh, material uh, resources, uh, infrastructure. Yes, the uh, oxygen plant uh, is probably the latest uh, in the last two or three years. Uh, th this is among the so many other contributions that the MLW have done to the hospital. All good things must come to an end. Our journey ends here. I look forward to another 25 years of research that drives health.